Hey guys, welcome back. Last week we went over the script on getting historical gamma exposure levels for each of the stocks in your data set. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the historical gamma exposure levels for Tesla according to our calculations. We're gonna go ahead and plot the historical price for the stock and use our gamma exposure levels as an indicator. As a reminder, in the last tutorial, we calculated the gamma exposure levels for all the option chains that were currently available for each trading day. And what we're going to extract from this table are the minimum and maximum maximum for the total along with the flip price on each given trading day. So in our script we're going to start off by assigning our ticker symbol. We're going to get the historical open high low close for the symbol that we assign. We're going to list all of our files and again we're focusing on all the expirations. We're going to read all of the files in and create a table and save it as all gex which is the table I just showed you. The next step is to extract all the unique trading days available in that table and for each of those dates we're going to subset our main table. We're going to extract the flip price, our max and min levels and create an XTS object so that we can use this as an indicator. So if we take a look at this indicator we have each trading day, our min, flip price and our max gex. So the values here represent the points on the curve. So if we take a look at a chart here as an example, this would be our flip price that we have calculated. The min gex is just the lowest point on the short gamma side and the max gex is just the highest point on the long gamma side. And as the stock price moves into this green shaded area, the theory is that dealers will be more inclined to purchase options to hedge. And the opposite is true if the stock price moves below this flip point into the red shaded area. So we're gonna test that theory in the script. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and merge this indicator along with our stock prices and also lag each of these values by one period since these are the calculated values at the end of each session. In other words, we're gonna go ahead and apply these values the following day. So in our next block, we're gonna go ahead and merge our stock price with our GEX indicator, lag each of the values, and omit any NAs. Now we're gonna go ahead and plot this as an indicator. So let's go ahead and maximize this plot. All right, so we have our stock price. The white line is our flip price. The green is the max level, and the red is the minimum level. I may be wrong, but I believe that this choppiness comes from recalculations for the gamma exposure levels as option chains are added or removed due to the expiration dates. But for now, let's just focus on the stock price and the flip price. So by looking at the chart, we can kind of see that the theory holds true. As the stock price is above this white line or the flip price, there seems to be a continuation to the upside. And we also have some instances where the stock price is below the flip price. And we do see a continuation to the downside until the stock crosses over our flip price. So since we have this data, let's go ahead and generate some trading signals. We're going to use our flip price to generate signals. So whenever the stock closes above the flip price, we want to be long and we want to remain short whenever it's below our flip price. So we're going to go ahead and add our signals as a column in our stock price XTS object. Now to get the strategy returns, we're going to get the closing price returns and multiply it by our lag signal. And we're also going to plot the returns of the stock price to symbolize the buy and hold strategy. So if we take a look at the strategy returns, and it looks like from the start of our data to about July of 2024, we were mainly shorting the stock since these two lines appear to be opposites. And from July until present, we have pretty much been long with no short signals. So it would be interesting to test more stocks to see if the pattern holds. And of course, this is not the only strategy that you can use by using the gamma exposure levels, but it does seem to be an interesting concept. And of course, this is not investment advice. I just wanted to show you one of the things you can do by having the historical gamma exposure levels. But with that, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.